1987, Paul Stanley of Kiss wrote a song with Desmond Child and Holly Knight called Hide Your Heart. In a really strange and interesting moment in music history, the song wound up being recorded by like five different artists in the span of like a year. We're going to go through each version of the song, but before we get started, be sure to like and subscribe, and you can support the channel on Patreon. Stanley met Child in the late 70s after the former saw the latter's band Rogue live. The two decided to write together, with their first collaboration being Kiss's mega hit, I Was Made For Lovin' You. Hide Your Heart was written and demoed for Kiss's 1987 Crazy Nights album. I've seen it suggested that Stanley was ripping off Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer with this song as the two tracks center around a couple. I don't really see it personally. It's not like John Bon Jovi owns the copyright on songs about couples, and Living on a Prayer is more upbeat and hopeful, while Hide Your Heart is slightly more tragic. If I had to guess, I would say the inspiration came from Stanley getting into theater at the time. It's a Romeo and Juliet song. The lyrics reference Streetcar Named Desire, a later Kiss song would reference Cat in the Hot Tin Roof. I think this would have been around the time that Stanley would have seen Andrew Lloyd Webber's Phantom of the Opera for the first time. That's just my theory, anyway. Regardless of the inspiration, it was rejected off Crazy Nights, likely by the producer Ron Nevison, and then Stanley started to offer it to other artists to record. Bonnie Tyler is a Welsh singer who rose to prominence in the late 70s and early 80s with massive hits such as Total Eclipse of the Heart and Holding Out for a Hero. Tyler asked Child to produce her seventh album. Besides working with Kiss, Child had been collaborating with Bon Jovi and Aerosmith, including the previously mentioned Living on a Prayer. Child has gone on record saying he loves Hide Your Heart, so it is most likely that he brought it to Tyler to record, and Knight even plays keyboards on this album. The album even ended up being called Hide Your Heart, which was released on May 9th, 1988. I've never heard this version of the song before, and I was pleasantly surprised by it. The production is fun, though very 80s. It's dated, but in a way that I can kind of enjoy. The chorus is big and infectious. Tyler's voice works really well. It's got a rasp that I really liked and Jerry Murata provides a fun groove on drums, and John McCurry's leads are really solid. It's solid. Unfortunately, it didn't really do anything for Tyler, though. The single didn't chart, and neither did the album in the U.S., though it did find some success in Europe, particularly Norway. Molly Hatchet is a southern rock band that had a couple of platinum-selling albums in the late 70s and early 80s, their most successful being 1979's Flirtin' with Disaster. Released on August 30th, 1989, Lightning Strikes Twice was their first album in five years and featured Hide Your Heart. Something I realized listening to these different versions is that this is a great song. No matter the version, I was singing along, that chorus is a good hook. This production is a tad silly. The keyboards killed me. The guitar solo is good, though. Hide Your Heart was not released as a single, and the album failed to chart in the U.S. It was their first album outside of their deal with Epic Records, and their new label, Capitol, dropped them after the failure. They would break up a year later in 1990, though only temporarily. Ace Frehley is the original lead guitarist for KISS, but he left the group in 1982. His solo career kicked off in 1987 with Frehley's Comet, though Frehley had also recorded a solo album in 1978 alongside the other members of KISS. Frehley's bass player at the time was John Regan, who also happened to have played bass on Tyler's version of the song. It is likely Regan brought the song to Frehley when they were looking for material. It wound up being recorded for Frehley's Trouble Walkin' album, released on October 13th, 1989. It's a similar arrangement to the Molly Hatchet version, though more focused on guitars. This is probably the toughest version of the song. Ironically, though, I think Fraley's solo might be the weakest. I 
Molly Hatchet fairly did not release Hide Your Heart as a single, opting for his cover of Do Ya instead. The album peaked at number 102, and Frehley would not record another solo album for 20 years. KISS was formed in 1973 and found relatively quick success through a string of successful albums in the 70s before a lapse in the early 80s. They managed to come back with singles like Lick It Up and Heavens on Fire, which provided them the stability to power through the 80s. As I said at the top, it was rejected off Crazy Nights, but Stanley must have liked it as he performed it live on a solo tour in 1989 with the promise that the song would end up on the next KISS album. Which it did. Kiss's version of Hide Your Heart was recorded for their Hot in the Shade album, which was released on October 17th, 1989. Hot in the Shade is a bit of a reaction to Crazy Nights, which was very keyboard heavy and a tad overproduced. Stanley and Gene Simmons decided to produce Hot in the Shade themselves, opting for a much simpler sound, but the result makes the album feel kind of small, almost like you're listening to demos. In a way that simplicity helps this song a little bit, it is the least dated of all the versions, though I do wish Eric Carr's drums were a lot bigger. I will say this is my favorite version of the song. I think Stanley's vocals are excellent and Bruce Kulick provides some really good guitar work. If I can only have one version, this is the version I pick. Hide Your Heart was the album's lead single, managing to reach number 66, with the album reaching number 29. The follow-up single, Forever, was much more successful, reaching number 8. Kiss's version is the most successful of the versions. If people know this song at all, they're going to know the Kiss version. Robin Beck is a singer who found success in 1987 with a song called First Time that was featured in a Coke commercial. Child produced her second album, Trouble or Nothing, which was released in 1989. So like Tyler, Child is the connective tissue for Hide Your Heart. Beck's version is my least favorite because it doesn't really stand out. The other four versions of the song all have the unique personalities of the artist recording them present, but this is way too similar to Tyler's version. Maybe that's Child's influence, but I think Tyler and Beck even have similar voices, at least on this track. The production isn't as big as Tyler's, but that's about the only difference. Good guitar solo, though. This album didn't perform, and Beck was dropped from Mercury Records. Sometimes the assumption is made that one of these artists could have had a really big hit with this song had they not all recorded it at the same time. I don't really think that holds water, though, as the only two artists that released it as a single were Bonnie Tyler and Kiss. I do know that some people just hate this song with every fiber of their being. Sometimes songs just don't connect, whether it's because of timing or people just not liking it or whatever. But I don't buy that Kiss could have had some huge monster hit had these other versions not happened. These other albums didn't sell. I don't think anyone was even aware there were other versions of the song. Regardless, this is a song I really love. It's one of my favorite Kiss songs, and I think this is a really interesting bit of Kiss's history, as well as just music history in general. It's fun hearing them all together. What do you think of this song? Which version is your favorite? Please let me know in the comments, and thank you for watching.